What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie from Elevate Yourself, where we change lives through volleyball, training, and inspirational content. Welcome to my volleyball coach and player reaction to Haikyuu Season 1, Episode 2, English Dub. If you want to watch my reaction to the original Japanese version from all the seasons, then check out the playlist linked in the description box. I was reading some of the comments from my top 5 Haikyuu moments from Season 4, and I wanted to apologize for not even considering Oikawa. I was so engrossed in the last five episodes from season four that I was only thinking about Kageyama and Atsumu and Kenma because he did make a couple appearances. So thanks for reminding me about Oikawa because he definitely is a very good setter. Before we start, I'm excited to announce our summer sale where you receive 10% off all Elevate apparel like this really cool Elevate tank top, 10% off all jump training programs like the Elevation Template, which comes with a mobile training app, and 10% off both annual subscriptions to my Patreon, where you receive access to exclusive content, like early access to my high cue reaction videos and more. Use the discount codes and links in the description box below to take advantage of this Elevate Summer Sale. Now let's get this high cue party started. Getting killed 25 to eight. Love that imagery when we got Hinata and Kageyama walking away. That was a cool transition. We go from a frustrated Hinata turning to look around and then transitioning into this hopeful Hinata. And that's what is Hinata's best quality is he never gives up and he always finds a way to just keep pushing forward. Karasuno. Can't get used to that. <laughs> that was a funny abrupt stop. Your arch nemesis. I need to get that poster of that opening scene freeze frame. What is this guy doing at Karasuno? No, it's gotta be somebody else. I love those. Man, I forgot how intense their first interaction was. Oh, this is already a year past. Hinata. Is it Hinata or Hinata? You know, honestly, it does feel nice not having to read subtitles. <laughs> I remember those karate hands. You know, I can definitely relate to Hinata because you spend all off season preparing for this one moment of I cannot wait to beat the guy that beat me, only to find out that either they moved away or you're on the same team, which honestly being on the same team is probably the best situation because you get to compete with someone just as competitive. But I can definitely relate how you can feel robbed of that opportunity that you've been dreaming of. For those who've played on sports teams before, it's kind of like you can't wait to beat this team that you lost to that first time around. And then when you do play them again, you either find out that the game got postponed or maybe that one player you want to get your revenge on is injured. And even if you beat them, it doesn't feel as satisfying. Sign of a true competitor here. Now Kageyama's confused. The grades, that's also a sign of a true competitor. <laughs> One thing I actually didn't notice the first time around watching this is there's been a lot of these scratchy lines to communicate such depth of emotion. Not only do they already have the wrinkles drawn in, not just shows the actual physical expression of the face, but somehow it communicates an even deeper sense of the emotion that they're feeling of frustration and anger and irritation. Uh, 
Oh, he got coming in from the gym. Give it a rest and knock out. You don't have to threaten everybody. What are you gonna do about it? Huh? Yeah. Oh, I forgot what the first meeting with Tanaka was gonna be like. <laughs> Come on. Can you get over Tanaka's facial expression? I don't know if that's disappointment or irritation. I think maybe he comes in walking to see who are these guys because Tanaka is the protector of Karasuno. But what's interesting is that Daichi and Suga of course come in with this warm welcoming smile because they are the team leaders and they're not reading too much into the situation. Yeah, that's a better welcome. I actually like the voices of Suga and Daichi. <laughs> Come on, can't, this is another awesome facial expression from Tanaka here. And I just noticed that Hinata is just creeping around the back, sneaking away completely out of the radar and now everyone's focused on K Kageyama, but did not notice that Hinata was just sneaking behind them. Oh, maybe he's just st standing behind to check out the height. So Hinata did go to the school because it was the little giant school. Easy to ignore the shorter player. <laughs> Shoyo Hinata. All right, someone's got to tell me whether the proper pronunciation of Karasuno is Karasuno or Karasuno. I can't get mad at how they're pronouncing it because it's important for people to pronounce things for the audience that they're actually speaking to. But I'm just curious because now I've, I'm just confused at which one's correct. And here we have another interesting facial expression from Tanaka. This guy is just so visually expressive. Okay, so they do remember him from the tournament. It's unfortunate that everyone keeps commenting on his height. I'm going to pause it every time I see a different facial expression from Tanaka. If you think about it, if I'm in charge of drawing Tanaka, how stressful is it to have to come up with 8, 9, 10 different facial expressions? With Suga, it's either warm smile or straight face or a little concern. That's about it. But Tanaka, we've already got like five facial expressions here and they're all pretty different and all hilarious. Cajones. Oh, I like that Kakayama. Oh. All right. See, this is great that Hinata's just not going to back down. He's hopeful, but he's also internally strong and just has such incredible emotional mental endurance. And I also like that Kageyama is just keeping people in check from day one. I'm curious why he didn't do that more with Suki earlier in the season. I know he was kind of standing up to Suki later on, but you got to respect Kageyama for speaking truth. And he's not going to give respect until someone earns it. And I think that's what makes me respect Kageyama even more. You got to earn his respect. He's just not going to be randomly nice and give out compliments to people. Excuse me. Excuse me. <sighs> Was that really necessary, Kageyama? I did everything I could. I did. Hinata did. He didn't have a lot of training opportunities or any coaching. We got a freeze frame in again. We got another interesting look at Tanaka's teeth. It almost looks like like an alpaca. If you can put up an image of an alpaca with their mouth open, he looks like that with this facial expression. One on one volleyball. That does exist. Bumps that spike to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, the principal. Yeah, Hinata's just completely blocking everyone out and focus on the competition. <laughs> One thing I do miss that we didn't see in seasons 2, 3, and 4 is the amount of detail in Kageyama's hair. I don't remember seeing that many white strands in the head. Now, I know they're not gray hairs. Now, the white strands are actually glare from the ceiling and the lighting. And you see how it makes the head just feel a lot more round. Imagine if it was all black, it would tend to look flatter. And on top of that, each white line is at a different angle, once again, communicating a more organic type of look. And I've actually been closely watching a lot of Hinata's hair animations and the head looks so full. Look at all the different shadows that you have to create because the hair is kind of all at different angles there. And one thing I did notice watching this second time around is Hinata's kind of crazy, right? Kind of hyper all over the place, emotionally all over the place, mentally can't really stay focused. And I just noticed that there, his hair actually reflects his personality. You know, someone that probably doesn't do his hair in the morning, probably wakes up with a bunch of pillow head, hair frazzled, but the color kind of fiery. And I don't know if I'm reading too much into this. Actually, one thing I've learned from watching Haikyuu is that you can never read too deep into something because everything has such incredible symbolism. But his hair kind of resembles fire, not just in the color, but also in the way that it's growing. And it's very representative of who Hinata is. And then now we look at Kakinyama's hair Simple, well-kept, you know, clean-cut, black, serious, somber, predictable, you know, that, that's definitely more reflective of Kageyama's personality. So I'm not surprised if the hair is supposed to reflect the personalities because I know Tanaka being bald is supposed to represent kind of that bad boy mentality like he's associated with the Yakuza. It is nice turning the music louder too, because you get to enjoy the music. I forgot what happens here. Is he just gonna hit a clean ace, or is this where the hit to toupee comes off? Oh, that's a great animation. Let's watch that jump serve again. This is before I started following the suggestion where you guys said anytime I should pause the anime or to rewind things if I want to see things again. So really grateful for that suggestion because I get to enjoy now another time this amazing jump serve animation here. Get ready. Frame by frame, let's look at this form. So one thing that Kageyama is doing really well here He's actually tossing with his right arm. I noticed that a lot of the Japanese national team members toss with their left arm, which is actually not as common. Most people who jump serve will toss with their hitting arm. So I'm curious why the Japanese teach it with the left arm here. So once you toss, you wanna to take a step right away. And then as you take your second step, you wanna bring your arms all the way back. And this is called your penultimate step. This is where you generate most of your jumping height and power is on that second to last step with your arms back. Slight dip in the body. You don't want to squat into it. You want to just lower slightly naturally. You see how he brings his arms up together and then he pulls his elbow back to load. And he also opens up his body. You see how his chest and his hips are now turning to the right. A lot of people make the mistake of trying to generate power when they're jump serving with their lower back by arching. You actually just want to generate with more torque, rotational power. Now, this scene is a little exaggerated. I mean, this, first of all, this is just beautifully animated. It reminds me so much of the Asian style comic books where you just got these aggressive brushstrokes to communicate so much 
emotion, strength, power, movement. So it's a little exaggerated. So here he's kind of over rotating. So this is not as realistic, but I think it's very well done. You see even here that those facial expressions are changing. Actually, it looks like his eyes and mouth are the same, but his face and the hair are moving to kind of show that he's just putting his whole body into the serve here. And on top of that, we got the aura, these black streaks going in circles around the contact of the ball. This definitely reminds me of Street Fighter 4. Perfect! And those impact, those black impact, I don't know if it's dust or just impact shapes coming off the ball there. And really good job finishing by following through with his wrist. And he not to barely escaping with his life. Yeah, jump serving is definitely more common in the men's game. Oh, he's ready in his ready position. Oh, he gets behind it. That's right. <laughs> yes, yeah, my favorite part. Scene. Definitely one of my favorite scenes of all high Q. Hey, you just now figured that out? I noticed it at the entrance ceremony. Dude, shut up! It's not even Alright, we gotta rewind that one. First of all, I don't think the voice actor was the right choice for this one. I think if this person sounded a little more nasally, like so much respect for the captain, kinda like an annoying geeky person that's always trying to get under your skin so I think someone a little bit more nasally would have been better here he just sounds like a normal guy if you think about it it's actually really hard to draw fake hair if I'm an animator and I think just adding a little bit extra curl on the outside yeah they did such a good job now let's see what it looks like when he hits the face <laughs> oh man this reminds me so much of my animation days being able to go frame by frame and you're literally drawing every picture and you have to anticipate and the ball even compresses you see how it goes from a full circle and the right side of the ball is still a solid circle and the left side is compressed so very good physics here and we got that cheek kind of smushed into the face then we got some breath coming out or some saliva coming out of his mouth <laughs> from here to here <laughs> so good <laughs> And not only is he getting hit in the face, it's kind of going upward. That was a nice touch to make it sound even more realistic. Wow, and that 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 little of a turn too. The nose going across the face. And at the same time, you see how they're animating Daichi's expression reacting in real time. We have wincing in pain into shock. And then the echo of the sound was great too. This is where the really good animation comes in. Oh, okay, look at his cheek there. So the moment it hits, the two wrinkles in this cheek that kind of match the contour of the ball, when you actually get, you, I'm pretty sure they they slow mode someone getting slapped in the face or something. But that's actually what happens. When you get hit, the first impact is actually pretty thick. So it stretches and then it collapses and it stretches again. It's kind of like a boingy, stretchy, collapsing effect and that's what they do so good here with the cheek collapses and expands <laughs> wow each frame is so different look at those lips even the lips it are even the mouth is matching the contour of the ball it's kind of curved like that stretched out the top part following behind and then he kind of turns <laughs> that's such a well very well animated scene and of course, we got Tanaka with another facial expression. Oh man, that was a toupee. You just now figured that out. I noticed it at the entrance ceremony. <laughs> Dude, shut up! It's not even that funny. You shut up, moron. Captain, a word, please. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we're not in trouble. He doesn't even want an apology. But we have been sworn to secrecy. <laughs> <laughs> sworn to secrecy. And as for you two, handled the serve. It wouldn't have happened in the first place. 
Yeah, how is Daichi gonna manage the energy? I forgot how that came about. Okay, so he just gotta yell at them. I don't know what your reasons were for choosing to come to this high school, but I assume you came to win. Yeah. Yes, obviously. Up until a few years ago. Volleyball team oh, and I remember what's interesting is that they started off with the scene of the crows in the alleyway Not these glorious crows that are flying away that we're used to seeing in the subsequent seasons. So they started at the bottom again Picking at the food. I think that's a really cool analogy I really like this soft piano music, very sentimental. I remember when Karasuno played in the Spring High National Tournament. I was a student at a nearby school who just happened to be in the neighborhood. Watching them fight. Did Daichi? I think he chose to go to Karasuno also because of the volleyball. It gave me chills. Hey. But I just noticed that there is a crow standing on this pole watching. The Karasuno crows play as Hinata is watching them. Maybe like uh, the crows are over watching over them. Let's go back one more time. The proclamation of Daichi, and then the crows fly away to their glorious flight. That's what great leaders do. They inspire with vision, not just talk but with action. Let me break down, in my opinion, what makes a great leader. And here we already see in episode two why Daichi is the decisive captain for this team and just a special person. I really, really, really like Daichi, by the way. Great leaders need three qualities. They need action. There are many great leaders that don't speak very well or maybe don't have a lot to say. Elon Musk, he stutters when he speaks. He's kind of awkward, but people follow his leadership. So action, and that's what Daichi does. We see later in the episodes where he is the one that's working hard, even though some of the upperclassmen are not really competing as hard as him, but he's still working hard regardless. So action is really important. The second one is communication. Now there are many ways to communicate. We talked about how it's, you can communicate with the actions, which is the most powerful, but at some point you do need to rally people together. That is either organizing activities, checking up on people, game strategy, whatever it is, you cannot be stuck in your bubble. And this is the common misnomer for introverts that end up being great leaders. It's not the amount of words they say or how loud they say things, it's what they say and when they say it. And the third one is vision. You need to have a very clear picture of where you want your team to go and you need to constantly remind them and build them towards that. You need to have a game plan to build that. And his vision actually started, you know, two years ago when he was playing all by himself with his core with a team that didn't really care. And this is a special moment because no one else is watching, no one else is listening except for the two underclassmen, Kageyama and Hinata. And then we have Tanaka and Suga there. And the fact that Daichi is willing to make that proclamation, regardless of who is there, means that is how he's committed that goal and that vision. And that's not dependent on the audience. It's completely dependent on what he's going to do with his action, communication, and vision. Release the crows. The vision is in the sky now. And look at that. And he brought Hinata into his vision. That's what good leaders do. They bring other people into the world. Into their world, sorry. Oh, Kageyama challenging him. What do you I know what you mean, but I'm dead serious. If we want to get there, we need to be a cohesive unit. Mm -hmm. Speaking the truth. Run-ins with the VP for one thing. Ooh, that serious bass music going on. I know back in middle school, you two. Ooh, we got, we got like an intimidating Daichi look here. And I think he handled Kageyama's challenge really well. So this whole time, Hinata and especially Kageyama, they don't really outright respect Daichi because they're just doing their own thing. And I think Daichi is handling this situation really well. He's obviously really frustrated and he knows that the school has been doing very well, but he is listening 
but he's also setting boundaries. He's also creating a structure so that they can be a successful team. And he's showing that he is the person to lead them. Might have been adversaries on opposite sides of the net, but let me be clear. You're on one side now, and you need to make peace with that. Is that clear? Oh, there we go. That's the intimidating look. Hand on the shoulder. Oh. You two are banned from participating in club activities until you learn to think of yourselves as teammates. Man, he's setting the tone early. I forgot about that. And to do that to the underclassmen when they already don't have a lot of participation. Now it's time for our halftime snack time, where we get to enjoy authentic Japanese snacks from Sakurako and Tokyo Treat, which is a monthly subscription service where you get to enjoy different authentic Japanese snacks every month delivered straight to your door. Let's check out Tokyo Treat, which is a more modern selection of authentic Japanese snacks. I like to choose one salty and one savory, so I think this is a salty snack. I'll be honest, I chose this because I think it had a pretty cool artwork on there. Let's see what's inside. Super crunchy, probably. Mmm, like a pretty lightly salty rice cracker. Never gets old. Mike! Now from a more traditional selection from Sakurako. This one actually has some English Hokkaido milk Danish. I tried a milk pastry last time, like a milk donut with a little egg flavor and it was yummy. So I'm hoping this will taste similar. Man, so fluffy. It smells so fresh. Even though it's probably been sitting in the box for about a week. Exactly like I imagined. It's actually on the sweeter side, which I like, but got that milky flavor, very fluffy. Definitely would love to dip this in some tea. Man, it's really good. My if you want to enjoy your own Sakurako or Tokyo Treat snacks, use my discount code and link in the description box to get $5 off your first order so you can enjoy your own Japanese snacks while we watch Haikyuu together. That was a cute one. I remember that one. That was kind of one of the original ones where I actually enjoyed where it hit that TV screen and got fuzzy. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta let people just figure things out on their own. This is a risk that all great leaders take, setting boundaries for better culture building and better growth later. And yes, you might lose people, but it's also a great tool to filter out the people that are truly committed or just wanna do it as a hobby. And Daichi knows that it can't get any worse than it is now, so why not take the risk to really set the standard high for behavior, especially with the incoming first years, because that's their only chance to really be better. So great leaders take great risks. I I won't pick any more fights with it. Please let me be. This is how badly they want to play volleyball. You mean that? We soon learned that Kageyama will not be able to keep that promise. <laughs> well, they did not learn the lesson. That's why volleyball is the ultimate team sport. You can't just take a football and run down the field or take a basketball dribble and score on your own. I get to see some practice scenes. There's a court and a ball right in front of that looks like a monkey. This is such a stupid waste of time. I have to get back in there. But we're not teammates yet, are we? I have a lot of potential. That should be more than enough for them to let me join the team. Spoken like 
Oh, ho, he's going to call him the king again. You know, you'd be surprised at how many players think like this. And I've encountered many where just because players think that they're the best player on the team or they have a lot of talent means they're entitled to anything that they want or an opportunity. And it's so essential. And I hope it's important to understand that talent is a starting point. It is not the end goal. Some are born with it, some are not. Some have to develop it. But there are so many other qualities that are required to be a great volleyball player. And this makes me appreciate Kageyama's evolution to that one moment where he finally trusted Tanaka in, a, in one of the biggest games, or actually the biggest game of his career at that time. So I don't think Kageyama is particularly selfish. I honestly think he thinks exactly like a lot of young players his age who are very talented. It's actually hard to find players who are very talented but also have great attitudes. Usually the players with not as good talent tend to have better work ethics because they have to try a lot harder. We win, then they have to let us join. That way we can at least look like we're working together as teammates. It's foolproof. You, you mean we have to beat them? What if we lose? We won't lose. I'll make sure. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Fear is not the best motivator to inspire. Yep, Hinata always standing up. I think when Kageyama talks about how that was his only opportunity, his only game, not everyone has the luxury of having a school team to play for or a club to play for. And I can see why Hinata's story is so relatable for all of you that want to play volleyball but maybe don't have as many opportunities. Now hopefully when you do become an adult and you can make your own money, travel where you want, you can finally create your experience. But if you truly love the game, just do what you can, train as best you can with the resources that you have, whether it's a wall, whether it's a wrapped up towel because you can't have you don't have a volleyball but there will come a time where you will have as many opportunities as you want to play volleyball you just want to be as ready as you can just like Hinata is right he's been working on his jumping ability he's been getting in shape jogging biking and he's been trying to pass to himself all the time to get used to that touch but be ready for the opportunity don't wait for that opportunity to come before you start preparing yourself I forgot if Kageyama has any empathy. And I stood in the middle of that huge gymnasium. I felt like the main character in a movie. It was like, whoa. Look at that hair animation, just so flowy. But only the strongest. That was probably the most empathetic anyway, they're not gonna moment for Kageyama. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, our first appearance of Shimizu. Man, they definitely went the extra mile with her hair. Every strand just to make it feel so full and so smooth there. Good idea, right? You, that first impression, you want to knock it out of the park. But they're not even enamored. Okay, are they enamored by her beauty, or are they still distracted by volleyball? Hey, Kyoko, thanks for your hard work. Oh, let me get that. No thanks. I can carry it myself. Okay then. You look super gorgeous today. <laughs> oh man, she's so pretty, but she ignores me. <laughs> <laughs> look at Suga's face. Definitely noticing a lot more of the facial expressions, just those funny quirks here. Did you guys notice Suga's face when he was closing the door here? And Suga rarely ever expresses his any attraction to Shimizu, so the fact that he's expressing it here shows that Suga is human. Yeah. Good work, 
right? Yeah, sure. But all they really have to do is cool off and prove to everybody that they've learned their lesson. Captain! <laughs> oh, they're still waiting outside. Originally, I thought they were challenging them just to try to get on with skill, but I actually see that their game plan is to show that they can work together, but secretly they're probably going to try to beat them with skill and just not argue. Three on three, it's every year with our new club members. So we forgot who that third person play. But if it's gonna be three on three, then who's gonna be our third player? Is it Suki? You're with them. Make sure they behave, alright. Oh man, why me? Oh that's right. Suki doesn't come in until later. That's too bad. I was thinking you'd be the only one tough enough to keep these delinquents alive. Oh well why the heck not when you put it like that. Wow, he's calling Kageyama out. I'm not saying I'll reject your application to join. I'm sure you'll be well suited to a different position. No way! I'm a setter! Oh, the truth comes out. Oh, they're not even playing right now. They're gonna wait. Have to wait. Dachi, are you being a little too harsh? He's right, boss. You're acting a lot more strict than usual. I know this might seem like Daichi's kind of acting over the top just because it's an anime, but one thing I've learned as a leader is strong personalities require strong personalities to be able to manage them. And I think he knows that with two really, really, really strong personalities, especially with Kageyama, he has to be extra firm. Not necessarily mean. I think sometimes people confuse mean with being firm or mean with being confident. But it's more about really establishing firm, strong boundaries to force people to grow in a positive way. Yeah, is there some special reason you're doing this? Damn it. What's wrong? Are you mad because you're the only one who gets penalized? Even if you're not the center, I bet you'd figure out a different position just like that. Plus, uh, Hinata's actually already encouraging. Kageyama definitely has control issues. Just like any, and people think point guard and quarterbacks are the coolest position on the team. That is true. This is called the technical position where you get to see the most important development and flow of the game and tendencies. Usually if it's at a side angle, you don't really get to see where the set's going. You just see a bunch of random people hitting. So that's really true. And I forgot how educational it was to watch Haikyuu because during the last five or six episodes, it was just so much emotion, action packed, but they are sneaking in instruction without making it feel like it's instruction. Because sometimes they bring up all these diagrams and move these pieces where it feels like you're in class, which is good. But then other times they're teaching you in conversation here. Wow! I forgot how passionate Kageyama was about being a setter. 
Yeah, Hinata hasn't played enough to understand that. That's why he's not getting as excited. Daichi took away his most prized position. <laughs> Creepy second year. No problem. Tanaka's also another true competitor because he doesn't want to lose, even if it means compromising some of the some of the rules. Five a.m. I love morning practices. <laughs> this is where we they start competing from the beginning. Sec That's right, in Japan, they actually can yeah, use gyms without adult supervision. Sir Tanaka. <laughs> Tanaka loves these power trips. So even Daichi noticed that from the stands. Very observant. The big difference now is that he and Hinata are on the same team. Look at Hinata's hair. This is poster quality illustration here. All the hair strands going in different directions, flowing to the left to make it look like he's flying, and even the wrinkles on his jerseys there. I think it's interesting that their jerseys have collars. I wonder if that's specific to Japanese style uniforms because in the US we don't really have collars on our uniforms. I know in Canada that's pretty popular. What? Hinata? Uh, yeah, I guess he's kind of a crazy ball of energy and agility. Right. But he hasn't reached his potential. He's got incredible speed and quick reflexes, not to mention that jumping power, but he never played with a real setter before. Kageyama, on the other hand, wants a spiker fast enough to hit the sets. Yeah, they secretly need each other. Their abilities are limited, but put them together. And let them work on some combinations. Ooh. Blowing them away with the crows. That was a cool illustration. <laughs> They did choose the right person to manage them, Tanaka. Someone who's just as energetic but also aggressive to keep him in check. Alright, if you're wondering why the net is sagging, it's very common for people to leave the net up if they're going to use it the next day, but to loosen it because it takes a lot of tension to keep a net straight across. You got to crank that thing really hard and over time, the tension does actually bend the poles inward, even though these this is like a very, very thick, powerful steel. You know, imagine all that tension for hours and hours and hours over many years. So one thing that many teams do is they loosen the net so that it can hang without having to reattach it on top, but not have to exert that much tension on the poles. So it prolongs the life of the poles and the nets. And it saves you time for setup still. Why they changed the interpretation from tiny to little giant. I've officially finished my second episode of the English dub and it has been a different experience. 
I have noticed the personalities are slightly different because the voice actors are different. And some of the words are a little bit more relatable like dumbass, cajones, things that are more popular in the English language. It definitely is lacking some of the intensity and some of the rawness from the original Japanese version, but I just might be biased because I saw the Japanese version first. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to continue to watch the English dub version for more episodes in season one, or should we go back to the Japanese version and just continue on that route for the second round of these reaction videos. If you've been enjoying my videos, please consider supporting Elevate Yourself by leaving a super thanks in the comment section, subscribing to our Patreon, or purchasing some apparel. All that money goes directly back to improving the content by purchasing new equipment, software, hiring new staff, paying my current staff, and just freeing up more time to create more content. Make sure you check out all the round two Haikyuu reaction videos right here, and I know you're gonna like this video right here. Oh,